Hi, welcome to my channel, where I share my knowledge on programming with Python, OpenCV, and etc. Today, we're going to learn how to record our video stream feed that we capture from our computer's internal webcam using OpenCV. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So, you can see right in front of you here, this is all up on GitHub, so you can pull it right from there and run it in your local environment without watching the rest of this video. But if you want to know how the specifics of everything works, please hold on. We're going to jump into my PyCharm and see what it looks like. So when you install the repo, you're going to have your primary project folder called recorded video or webcam or tele camera streams. For now, we're going to focus on webcam and there's a license readme. You can check those out if you want. But what we're going to be concerned with today is this record webcam.py module. This is the module in which we're going to both receive our video stream from our computer's internal webcam and also record the video frames that are being streamed and save them to a file so that we can view them later. So how are we going to do this? Let's start with our imports. We start by importing OpenCV, DateTime, and OS. So OpenCV is for video processing, of course. DateTime, we're going to use that to get a timestamp. And specifically, we're going to import a DateTime object so that we can call this .now method, which you'll see in a minute. And lastly, OS for some file operations, which you'll see here. Because after importing things, we go ahead and we create a path to a directory called recordings. And within this current, and this is going to be held within our current working directory. Now, you can either go ahead and manually go to your project, right click, and add a new um, directory, as you see here. But so that you don't have to, we're going to go ahead and have this next line here, create it if it doesn't exist. This is what OS is used for. So if not os.path.exists, this recordings directory, then we're going to create it using the OS make directories. Now that handles where we're going to store our output files. Next, we're going to go ahead and define two functions. One called record over webcam, which will actually initialize our video writer object and then call our video stream function which we specify beneath it. Let's go ahead and look at the stream video first because we're familiar with it from a previous video where we streamed video over our computer's webcam using OpenCV. So the difference between this function and that one here is that this takes in a capture object and a video writer object as its arguments. And then we use uh, exception handling, try catch finally, well, try accept finally um, to process our video frames. We have an infinite loop here while true we get frames and then we use the output the video writer to specify it in the argument to write the frames and then we show them until the q key is pressed and under the case the q key is pressed we go ahead and in our finally block we'll handle our cap releasing our output writer releasing and our destroying of windows now with that scene and it looks familiar hopefully let's move up to where we create our video writer we do this in this function we title record over webcam. Now this function takes in both a channel or it only takes in a channel number. Now the reason this is set up as such is so that you can either pass a zero as the argument for your internal webcam or you can pass one as the argument if you have an external USB cam connected. We're going to just be using zero our internal webcam and let you test that if you wish. So looking at the block comment this is what allows us to re record video over an internal or external webcam feed and save it for later viewing. The arguments we just discussed. And as always, we're going to use exception handling. We're going to try to do everything here. And if an exception occurs, we're going to know it occurred in this function I printed into the console. Now, what are we going to try doing? We're going to try first using our datetime.now method. We're going to call, well, we're going to create a timestamp variable and then we're going to call our date time object, which we imported, we're going to call it dot now method. And then we're going to use this straight time to get it in the format that we desire month, day, or a month, a year, month, day, and times, hour, minute, second. There'll be a little more info on here on the screen that you'll be seeing, but that's all you need to know about that. Next, we initialize our video capture object as we've done before, except this time we pass in the argument that we passed to the function being the channel of the camera to connect to. Now we're going to be using zero again. We'll see that when we call this function. Moving on past our initialization of our capture object, we went ahead and we've added an additional 
couple lines of code that aren't in our previous stream video uh, function. Now, these are pretty cool because this ensures there's no issues going on with our video capture object. So say we didn't have this line, but we had an external webcam connected and maybe we didn't have the right driver software installed on our computer to connect to that webcam yet. Well, when we run this without that, without this, uh, if not cap is open and the value area we, we raise, we really wouldn't know where the error is coming from. We'd know it have something to do with our video capture, but with less experience programming such functions, it, it could take a while to debug possibly. So this is really helpful. So if the cap's not opened, we know there's the issue with the webcam. So we're gonna go ahead and print both the console and raise a value error, specifying which channel is causing the issue. So we know if it's internal or external and printing the message that it's the camera that is the problem. So with that little extra bit, you don't need it, I like it. We're gonna go ahead and create our video writer. We use this using OpenCV. We call cv2.videowriter, which is a video writer object from OpenCV. And here we have a few arguments we pass. First, we pass our output file path. This is where the video writer is gonna write our frames to. And as we've specified previously, it's gonna be recordings directory. Next, we're gonna specify, well, okay, so I forgot to say the join here. So we have a os.path.join. This is the entire file path. So we used our recordings directory file path and we joined it with the timestamp, concatenated with the channel number, concatenated with the text webcam recording.mp4 because we wanna save it in, as an mp4 file. So this is our entire path. The recordings directory is joined with the timestamp and channel of the um, camera at this current time when we're running this function. Now past the first argument specifying the output file path, we have to specify the codec to use, which is what this line does. CV2.VideoWriter at 4CC, however you say that, star MP4V. That's how you specify the right format. If you don't do this, you might get it outputted in a .AVI format which you might have some trouble playing. So past this, we have two more. We have to define our frames per second we wanna to write to the output file with and the frame size. These are all obtained from properties of our video capture object. So the frames per se second, well, let me say we have to cast these all as an integer too, otherwise you'll have issues popping up. So we get the frames per se second using our cap.get and we get this class property, the cap prop FPS. Again, wrapping it as an integer. Next, we get our frame width and our frame height in a similar way. I won't go ahead and explain it all because it's simply just reading the text. And that's that. Past this, we have our output writer and we can pass it as an argument with our capture object to our streaming video function. And that's it. Now, we also have the exception as mentioned we know to come back and debug things here. And that's all there is to it. So we're gonna go ahead and run this program in a main function, which we execute in a Dunder main, referring to this being the module. So let's go ahead, uncover my internal webcam here. Let's run it. And there we are. Now we have no way of really knowing it's recording right now. It just looks like a standard video stream, but uh, you could add like a little red dot up there with the text if you want. That's just some open CV drawing stuff. To really see our proof, let's hit the Q key. And we'll see that we've um, we've saved the output file as it wants to add this to our GitHub repository. And you'll also see here in this recording, this folder, we have our MP4 file. Now, we can't play this in our environment currently. So I'll go ahead and pull it up in my local file system under this project. So it's the same location wherever you downloaded your project to in the recordings directory. Let's check it out. So here's the file. It's titled with our date, the month, and the day of the month, along with our timestamp. Let's go ahead and play it using our uh, system's default 
media player. And it looks good. It worked properly. We saved the file. We wrote the frames using our output writer. We don't have audio. If you'd like to see how we can add that, let me know in the comments. Give me a like, share, subscribe, whatever, you know. Let me know what you want. I don't know what to do. So hopefully this is something that you guys like. Uh, if you got anything from this, again, I appreciate your support. And I enjoy uh, putting out things that would have helped me on my journey when I was trying to learn all of this, either through my coursework in college or through my independent study. Now, with nothing else to say, have a great day.